So Little Yachty says, or Little, I said Little, Lil Yachty says, hip hop is in a terrible place. The state of hip hop right now is a lot of imitation. It's a lot of quick, low quality music being put out. It's a lot less risk taking, a lot less originality. People are too safe now. Everyone is so safe. I'd rather take the risk than take now, the Now, before L. I get into the disagreements, I am going to say something that I do agree with. And it's hard to disagree with when I paint the picture the way I'm about to paint it. He said there is a lot of imitation right now and a lot less originality. So I agree with that to an extent. If you look at the 90s, everything was fresh. The genre was fresh. So people were figuring out people were putting things together. If you just isolate the East Coast and look at the East Coast by itself, just within the East Coast, there were imitators. But when you look at somebody like the whole Wu-Tang Clan, but then you look at Nas, then you look at Mob Deep, but then you look at Tribe, and we could go on for days. Each individual rapper, you know, that I just named and even the whole Wu-Tang Clan, none of them had the same sound. The sound was similar. There were qualities of the East Coast sound that made their shit East Coast. But as far as the producers behind it, they had a different sound. And as far as the rappers, they Raekwon and Q-Tip sound nothing alike. And we could compare all the rappers that I named, but none of them sound too fucking similar. Really, they don't sound similar at all, most of them. And when you get past just the East Coast niche, you have the South, which sounded completely different, and the West Coast, which sounded completely different. The Midwest really didn't have a sound in the 90s. That's what it was. But when we look at a lot of imitation now, I'm going to highlight just one sector, which is the New York drill sector, the New York drill, which I think they have some things that are unique to them and original, like the whole Batman voice thing. Niggas don't do that anywhere else. When niggas start rapping like, <laughs> like with the fucking raspiness in their voice, and that's not really how they talk. That's something that is unique to New York as far as New York drill. But the other thing about that is within New York is too many fucking rappers that do it. And the reason that that's the case is because the barrier to entry to get in the game and get attention and to be looked at as somebody is zero compared to what it was back then. There's no artist development. There's nobody saying we not about to put this shit out and distribute it. You know, there's no gatekeeping whatsoever when it comes to you being able to put out a song, get attention to it and create a career yourself out of thin air. Now, back to imitation. Drill didn't come from New York. Drill is a subgenre that came from Chicago. But also, this is the other thing. DJ L out of Chicago is the one who made the current drill bounce that everybody is going with right now. But the people who really took it to another level and really popularized it was the UK producers and all of that. The t -t 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 -t, all that shit, that rhythm, if you know that rhythm, that drill rhythm was made by DJ L. It was taken by the UK. You know, they, they revamped it and all that stuff. And then when it came to Pop Smoke getting drill beats and stuff like that, he got his beats from 808 Mellow. And then that sound began to then become the sound in New York and stuff like that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you can say, yo, that's a genre, just like hip hop is a genre. Everybody wants to do the genre, even though it's just a subgenre. Well, things about the subgenre were very local. They were very local to Chicago at one point, like the whole, I'm putting this nigga in a pack shit and rapping about dead people, real life dead ops. But now you got people from London all the way to LA, all the way to Jacksonville, Florida, rapping about dead ops and taunting other gang members through the raps and stuff like that. And when you also look at the Migos triplet flow a few years ago and stuff like that, all of this, everything that I'm saying, 
there are a lot of things that everybody does, everybody, that are very specific and play into the imitation that everybody is doing. So even when you look at how people dress from coast to coast, back in the 2000s and the 90s, like, the, the West Coast uniform was different than the East Coast uniform as far as New York and L.A. And then the South, they had their own shit as well, the tall tees and all that shit. It was different. It was all different. Now the fashion is kind of blended. Everybody wears the same shit. Everybody wearing the same designer. You know, the Burberry button up is the fucking universal baby shower. I'm a boss outfit, birthday outfit. So just to get all of that out of the way, as far as imitation, there's always been imitation in hip hop, but I think it's more flagrant, more blatant and more widespread now to where it's refreshing when you see somebody doing something that may be a twist on something somebody else does or even even may not be. But you can look at it like nobody's doing this. This is original or even nobody's doing this now, even if people did it at a different point or he's doing something in a way that everybody else is doing. But he's doing it in a way that nobody else is doing it. It's great when you see that type of stuff. But as far as the widespread, everybody right now is just a carbon copy of somebody else for the most part. And I want to be specific. There's a difference between being influenced and being a carbon copy. And that's just what it is. And even then, one thing I want to get out before I move on, there's only so many flows that you can do and stuff like that. There's only whatever, whatever. But when the triplet flow was going on, why didn't none of y'all kick the Project Pat flow? Because y'all all wanted to kick the triplet flow. Y'all all wanted to fit in. That's what was hot. So you did it. You liked it. That's what was hot. That's what the fans gravitated towards. So you did it. And that's just what it is. So let's get that out the way as far as originality and stuff. And I don't really shit on niggas for using the same flow or anything like that. But when we talk about imitation, it's undeniably imitation when everybody is fucking doing it. Now, as far as him saying it's a lot of low quality music being put out, a lot of quick, low quality music. To me, that's funny coming from him. And I hate to do this, but I have to do it because I fuck with Yachty. But when he was making songs on his come up like water, I guarantee, bro, he you can't tell me he wrote that. You can't tell me there was time put into trying to make that a quality song. Now, he is an artist that is deep in his career, close to a decade at this point. But let's be honest, the people who are putting out the quick, low quality music are newer artists, people who are trying to get established, people who aren't even some of them aren't even like really in a game signed to a label. They just trying to catch a wave and don't get it twisted. Yachty didn't invent this shit. You got to go back and you got to say, OK, well, 50, 50 really started this mixtape shit to a certain extent. He probably wasn't the first person doing it, but he's one of the people who helped bring it to what it is today. Gucci man helped elevate that shit and Wayne helped elevate that shit. If there was a Mount Rushmore for mixtapes, them three diggers absolutely have to be on a Mount Rushmore. So when you look at and I got to be honest, because I know y'all love all three of them people that I named, but they were just especially Gucci and Wayne. I know 50 was, too, but especially Gucci and Wayne, they were going in to the booth and saying anything, the first thing that come to their mind to try and get some shit done and flood the streets. That's what it was. And they created that culture. And even though now we have gotten away from the Dat Piff era and the live mixtapes era because Spotify kicked them niggas out of their position and stuff like that, along with the labels, we still have that part of the culture that is still prevalent. So when we talk about that, Lil Yachty has contributed to that as well. And that's still going on today. But when you look at more established artists, they don't do that. 
And even if you want to look at somebody like The Weeknd, who is not a rapper, or Kendrick, who, you know, Kendrick was forced into this, really, but who have longer gaps between their release schedules and shit like that, you know, they make really good quality music, so I can't say they're lucky, but in the way things work now, you would kind of think that they are lucky to some extent because everybody doesn't have the luxury of doing that. Now, when we talk about this, even though I mentioned a lot of underground people, I do understand we're talking about the forefront of the mainstream when we're talking about the state of hip hop and stuff like that. There are a lot of people who do put out quality music. I don't think it's the majority so he may have some validity to what he's saying. But as far as some people, you know, there are a lot of people who actually do put out quality music. But as far as him saying risk taking and things like that and playing it safe. We got to be honest. We got to be completely honest. In the 90s, the reason I mentioned the 90s is because you could see a conscious rapper getting a budget towards their album, their songs being played on the radio in heavy rotation, these people are still packing out arenas at that time and stuff like that, getting together and having really good tours, going crazy. Once we get to the 2000s, that's when the death of the conscious rapper, or as I call them, vegetarian rappers, that's when the death of the conscious rapper begins to you know, come into the fold, Kanye begins to replace that himself. He uses them. He said that he used them. And once he got the mainstream, he became the new standard for rappers that are not gangsters and thugs and stuff like that. And he also paved the way for people, the, the main top three right now, Drake, Kendrick, and Cole. The thing about Drake, Kendrick, and Cole is there is gangster shit in their music. There's violence in their music. There's motherfucking sex, all that shit that the vegetarian niggas just wasn't doing. I'm not going to go super deep, but the point that I'm making is when we got to the 2000s, that's when the gangster hit his peak. I don't even want to say the peak, but that's when the, it, it began to, you know, hit the peak as where the other things that you could be in hip hop began to hit a decline. That's just what it is. Now, you want to say, well, look at Drake. He's like a mainstream guy and he's a top guy. and He's a regular dude. Drake is rapping about goons and sliding and shit. He's feeding into the gangster shit. And I'm going to talk about this one day if I haven't already. But the main subject matter that has taken over hip hop in the past 20 years is sex, drugs, money, violence. Anything that falls under those categories, niggas love to hear it. White people love to hear it. Everybody who listens to hip hop around the world loves to hear that fucking ignorance. So when you look at that, you got G-Unit popping and you got motherfucking trap music, which is the whole foundation of trap music is drug dealing and shit like that. So it takes it to a whole nother place. You know, and then you get drill music, which the whole foundation of that is gangbang killings, local gangbang killings, not like, oh, this nigga is my op across the country. No, this nigga two blocks over. I want to kill that nigga and fuck his dead brother. That's what the fuck is going on there. When you got that shit being the main shit on the forefront all these fake ass, and don't get it twisted, it's a lot of real niggas, but a lot of fake ass niggas, like, feel like I cannot be accepted being myself, so I got to come in and be a fucking gangster. I mean, Yachty is not a gangster nigga himself, and he kicks the gangster shit because don't get it twisted. We, me included, love the gangster shit, but everybody feel like they got to kick the gangster shit. So I don't want to hear about risk-taking and shit like that, even though Yachty's music is different and he, he does do some original shit. Like, when we talk about a lot less originality and people playing it safe, the game, the majority of the game has been playing it safe for 20 fucking years. 20 fucking years. You look at somebody like Outkast and shit like that, how many fucking Outkasts 
have gotten pushed in the mainstream since then. I'm not about to go down the list, but you just pointed a nigga like Childish Gambino. That's one of the most original niggas I can think of. And even then, I'm not going to go super deep. I'm not going to go super deep. But, but, but I do have to say that the nigga Redbone is motherfucking like a, 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 a Boosie Collins song or some shit. I can't, you know, you know the song, bro. Like Parliament fucking Delic or some shit. But then on top of that, this is America was completely stolen from another nigga. So how original is the most original nigga that I can point at? How original is the most original nigga I can point at? I'm done though.